Hi family, it's me, Miss Sam. Mm, hugs and kisses to you. How is everybody? All right, there's a few readings that I want to, well, there's more than a few readings that I want to do. So, there is a rumor that Riley wants to go and live in Australia. Of course, that's where her husband is from, okay? I want to ask Uncle Elvis. Now, it's so windy that if I light some candles, the wind is just going to blow them out. And then also, the air conditioning is there. You can see the air conditioning, the AC thing up there. So, the candle will just blow out, okay? I did start lighting candles, about five of them. The heat has bent the candles. <laughs> and uh, the, um, the other one is thicker. All the lights just blew out because it's just it's just so windy. Yeah? The ocean is over there. Okay. I'm in um Hua Hin in uh just outside of Bangkok. We have the ocean there. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull some cards. I will light some incense. I have some oud there burning very very slowly so I think I put too much stuff on it I'll just light some sandalwood and then see if I can call Uncle Elvis's energy and see what he can tell us in regards to this proposed move to Australia just how his energy reacts to me saying that okay all right card just flew off the top of the deck so I'll get that card just hold on All right. I'm gonna put the card right back on the deck here okay you can see it right here okay and I like this She rode upon it, return to sender. <sighs> uh, address unknown, no such number, no such zone. Ah, <laughs> uh, boy. Thank you all of the Mary Ashe Ashe. I'm under a full moon here. Let me just show you. Show you a full moon. See that? Full moon. Okay. Uncle Elvis, please. Elvis Presley. Elvis Aaron Presley. Spirits have already heard me loud and clear. I've got three cards. Ola Dumare, what does Uncle Elvis feel? Or how, how does he feel? What does he feel in regards to Riley's perhaps plan of moving to Australia? Move into Australia, move into Australia, move into Australia, move into Australia. We got an affirmative here. Uh, this is the opposite of what I wanted. I mean, it's got nothing to do with me, do you know what I mean? But uh, <clears throat> we got an affirmative from Uncle Elvis. Now, I did pull out three cards before. Okay, but let me show you, before I go to those cards, let me show you the ones that he gave me directly. So, we've got the High Priestess here.
Um, I think Riley has had a reading. We've got the the full card here. It looks as if Riley has had a reading. And we've got the eight of wands here. So this is more than just this is more than just a plan. This is something that Riley is going to do. And we do have an affirmative, but there are people around Riley who do not want her to go, okay? I don't think this is Riley's husband's wishes because here's Riley and her husband here. We've got the two of cups and it's in reverse. And then we also have the chariot card here in reverse. So it looks like they're not exactly on the same page. It may be the case of they've talked about it and they both know that they're not on the same page in regards to this Australian move or he hasn't articulated his feelings. The feminine energy on here is that Riley has made up her mind and she wants to go. But I think with this Knight of Cups here in reverse, that's her husband. And there is a difference of opinion. He don't really want to up sticks and go. I mean, to be honest with you, from the outside looking in, and also because I've been looking in with the cards this whole year, leaving wouldn't be such a bad thing because there's a lot of drama. There's a lot of, you know, the media and so on, right? But at the same time, we have the brand and we've got Graceland and Graceland is physically in Memphis, Tennessee. And then you think to my mind, all I could see was like a, a, just a pulling apart, like a, a severing, you know, of, of, and I know you can be anywhere in this world and you can have something which is established somewhere and then you can run it from elsewhere. Of course, I know that. But I don't know if it's I don't know if they want to move for the entire year or whatever. But you see, it leaves it leaves things open. Now we've got like Uncle Elvis saying, when I say open, it leaves the door open for you know they say out of sight. I, out of sight, out of mind. That's one thing that people say. And then also, I know Riley doesn't give a shit what anybody says in term. And not that she doesn't give a shit. She's not hard like that. But she, Riley, has prioritized, and her mum has probably taught her to prioritize her happiness and that of her family. And she's a new mother as well. So she wants to raise her baby away from drama and maybe being on the soil in the USA is, is not far enough away from the drama. Maybe she feels that she has to go to a whole other country. And when you move to Australia, it's not like just moving to like, it's not like she's going to move to Mexico or Mexico, where it's just a couple of hours flight, you know, just, you know, you can be back and forth, you know? You can cross border, you can cross the border all the time. Three, four times a week you can cross the border in a seven day period, you know, for work and so on. And she's got work, Graceland. Her, her grandfather, Elvis, he, he wants her to go. I wasn't expecting that. He thinks it's an opportunity for her. You know, it's the full card here. He knows that there are some things that she wants to do. But, um, like, maybe she has some plans for Elvis Presley Enterprises for, for all of that. Maybe she wants to establish a Graceland over there or, or, or restaurants, a chain of restaurants in Australia, which of course they would do very, very well. Of course, the Australian market is just so huge and everything, but God damn. It's so far away.
her and her husband are not on the same page. You know, probably he don't really want to push things. He don't really want to assert his opinion because, you know, she's grieving. She's got a lot on her plate. But he don't want to go. There's a chariot card here. In reverse, the chariot card refers to, like, domestic matters, you know. And because, um, you know, it's got that kind of tent thing. You see it there? You know? There's curtains on the tent here and the driver, the chariot driver, and so on. And the two sphinxes there. It's domestic matters. And then we have the Knight of Cups here in reverse. It's kind of stuck energy here next to the Two of Cups, the chariot, and the Knight. Stuck as in, you know, the emotions. See, the knight is supposed to move very, very quickly, yeah? But this time the knight is in reverse, so it can go either way. But next to the chariot in reverse here, stuck. It's like there's something under the wheels of the chariot. That's his emotions. Um, ordinarily, <laughs> I would say that they should talk about it. Do you know what I mean? You can't have... The wife wanting to do one thing and the husband not really wanting to do it because what will happen is, you see, and then there's the why she want to move. So let me pull some more cards. I'll just pull some more cards. I was going to say, ordinarily, the guidance would be you all need to talk and come to a consensus. You know, you've got to kind of give and take a little bit, compromise and all the rest of it. But why does she want to leave? This, this is the most important question. Because it might not be what we think. Okay? I mentioned drama, but but what is that drama? Is it is she running away because Priscilla is there? What is it? What is it? Okay? Card sticking out. Yeah, see? Five of Swords here. Some big bullying energy on here, and it is drama. Look. See the person there with the swords here? And those two people in the background? You know what's coming up, family? This is an older person. And then we have the two younger people here in the background. So it's the bullying. Riley is over this kind of passive aggressive bullying. We know better than you. We're older than you. We're more experienced than you. It, you need to do things this way. She want to be out of that kind of conversation. She doesn't want to have the kind, because it's not that she's disrespectful or anything like that. And she does understand the gravity of what it is that she has to manage, i.e. Graceland and her grandfather's legacy. But she really can do without all these fuddy-duddies. And it's not just fuddy-duddy in age, but it's fuddy-duddy in mind, because the sword is about the mind, the intellect, and as well as the conflict. So this is what she want to get away from. See, her mother put up with that for all of her life. Yeah? This was, Graceland was left to you, but we know Graceland better than you, type of thing. And yes, it belongs to you, but let us run it. Now, there's not much room for Riley to be able to impose her ideas on U.S. soil in regards to the Graceland brand. And it's such a shame because physically, and the energy is in Memphis, Tennessee. And I, I just, I'm not that confident that it can be, I know this is happening. I know. But I'm not that confident that that Graceland energy can be transported over there to Australia like that. Just some things just don't, some things just don't mix, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? Unless, of course, it's just from a purely, because you see, it's the essence. She being there as Uncle Elvis's granddaughter, yes, the essence is in her and with her. But that, that soil, man, that, that soil, the, the dirt, the ground, Graceland, the house, the bricks, the mortar, the driveway, the gates, the bedrooms. 
unless of course somebody has come to her with a great idea and said Riley I can basically make this and put it in Australia and we'll turn it into like you know the same same thing you know same same I just I, I mean again I'm an outsider so I'm just not really confident about that at all but You see, the thing about it is there's this new crowd, right? There's a new crowd. You might consider me to be about, I'm nearly 50 years old, so I'm not new crowd at all. But there's a new crowd of, crowd of people who are articulating just how much they love Uncle Elvis, right? Because we ain't falling for the okie doke no more. Oh, this man is a racist. And da, 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 blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. We saw, a, people saw the real Elvis and I keep saying that I almost made that mistake in the other reading as well I said oh we saw a new side of him no we're just seeing the guy for who he who he is let me tell you something all this stuff is going on with Jamie Foxx right now I don't know if you all know about it and it's the same thing it's the same thing how many times did they try to kill John Lennon before they actually got him just think about it the same thing with Ronald Reagan. After people, after the industry, Hollywood, the government has had their use and their, after they've used people up and used them for their agenda, they get rid of them. They did the same thing with Uncle Elvis. They did the same thing with him. And they used people around him to get rid of him. Some of the members of the Memphis Mafia not the ones in the interviews that we've seen those long interviews not them <laughs> i know some of y'all were um, kind of uh, a bit vicious with the one with the glasses the one who said that he he told elvis to tell priscilla's dad to go and f you know when he was telling them about marrying priscilla and some of you said that's marty lacker is it marty lacker and you're like, well, who's he to talk? Da, 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 da. Some of you are cussed him out, blessed him out in the comment section. Oh, Lord. <laughs> this thing is very political, right? But the point of the matter is, what I was saying, you know, they did the same thing with Jamie Foxx. People don't know whether Jamie Foxx is dead or alive. But they're always trying to lick. And they're trying to lick our stars. And they did that with Elvis. And uh, Riley, Australia is too far, darling. It's too far. Listen to Auntie Sam. It's so far. And your career is here as well. You fed up for Hollywood. You were pissed off from Hollywood. Let me pull some more cards. I don't blame. I don't. I don't blame you if it's that. And the next card. But the Nine of Cups. Oh God. got some character here nine of cups and we've got the devil card here okay all I'm hearing is that you won't change anything clarification card hold on psychic energy was you won't change anything I've got the eight of cups here see this with that blue curtain of protection around him see this devil here and we see the Eight of Cups here in reverse. This is Michael Lockwood, this Nine of Cups here. That's Michael Lockwood. It doesn't surprise me that this friggin' Devil card has come up next to it either. There's a sense, right? We've got the Eight of Cups here in reverse. There's a sense that Riley want to get away from him. But her sisters will, are with him. It's, it's just a bit weird. Because on this Eight of Cups card, even though Riley's going, she's also coming. So how can you go and come at the same time? How can you get away from Michael Lockwood but also come for him? Unless, of course, she's going to come from him from afar, if you know what I mean. I don't quite get it. I 
and then those eight cups and they're stacked irregularly you see because this is about walking away from relationships and situations and we've got these eight cups here You know, it's either Riley just want to throw everything and everybody away and just leave with her husband and baby. Or she's just fed up of everybody. But this is Michael Lockwood here, Nine of Cups. That's him. And you see, he's very kind of smarmy, comfortable. Do you know what I mean? He's used to, he's used to nice stuff now, nice life. She feels, though, that he's being protected because that's what that blue curtain of protection is about. See the blue curtain? So she feels that this guy is protected. Like, it's almost like if she fights him, she can't win. And so she has to move in order to be able to fight him effectively. I don't see how... I don't, I just, I don't get that. Unless, of course, she believes that he has friends in high places because this is usually what the nine of cups card does mean Tim it's not the ten of cups all the the cups are like trophies there on the table good relationships with the right people him there sitting with the hat you know there's this addiction energy as well because the this guy Lockwood has these red cheeks can you see his face the red cheeks He's fat and he's satisfied. He's eaten enough, he's drunk enough. He got good friends, that curtain of protection there. You know, no one ain't gonna bother him. He knows the right calls to make. You know, he knows a man who can type of thing. So she feels like she's disadvantaged against him. Now, of course, the devil card did come up. And there's a man and a woman chained to that door there. So I don't know if she, she don't want to, she, it's like she don't willingly want to be chained. Her and her husband don't want to be chained to this devil called Michael Lock, um, Lockwood. Because even though the will, everything has been left to Riley for her to distribute, you know, according to how, primarily how she feels fit since Priscilla is challenging everything, I think May the 16th, they're back in court as well. Michael Lockwood is now the legal guardian of the children and he has filed additional papers to oversee all of their interests. You can see what Riley is facing. She don't want to be chained to this piece of work. There's also addiction energy on there as well. And that addiction energy plus the nine of cups, addiction energy, you know, someone who is indulging in something, she just kind of, it's a bit icky for her. She want to get away, but she still wants to deal with it in some way. This moon here, it's telling me she's just kind of waiting for the right time, but she, it's like when somebody want to launch an attack. I shouldn't even be saying this, should I? Because it's spilling the beans, if it is so. This is for entertainment purposes only anyway. But it's like if somebody wants to launch an attack, but they want to put themselves in a safe space, at a safe distance, and then launch the attack from there. Where does Michael Lockwood come from? Now, what kind of magic can she do in the outback? <laughs> you see, my mind automatically goes to the, to the voodoo. What Aboriginal magic can she do? Can she spiritually get a koala to box him? Koala box. Can she get a kangaroo to just bloody hop all over him? Like, spiritually hop all over him? I don't know. This is not liquor, by the way. It's just something I found in the 7-Eleven. Well, I don't know. Now, I have some more Elvis readings to do, but I just want to upload this one tonight. And tomorrow, 
is going to be more Elvis readings because admittedly I focused on Jamie Foxx more today okay so I'm gonna leave this one right here okay so in this reading we looked at this plan of Riley's could be in Australia and then spiritually throw a, a we call it a boomerang I would hate for it to be the case that she doesn't get to have a great relationship with her twin sisters as her mum would have wanted because of him. See, because some of you were saying that, that Riley should have, once her mum died, she should have filed for custody of her sisters but she didn't it's no polish no polish <laughs> but she didn't she let the father well she let she just didn't she just didn't do that neither did priscilla it stands to reason anyway because priscilla and him are working together two of the, they're thick as thieves Pardon the pun. Priscilla and Michael Lockwood. Like that. So I don't know. I don't know. And then of course, one of them twins Oh, one of you said that one of the twins has eyes like Miss Gladys, like her great grandma. Those eyes with the, like the Miss Gladys had those eyes. They call them panda eyes, dark eyes. One of y'all rightfully pointed out that she looked like Miss Gladys, but one of them twins is doing witchcraft, and one of them. want to add to the discontent you know don't want to but there's already a lot of discontent a lot see and another thing is how does Priscilla feel about Riley how does she feel or how would she feel about Riley moving to Australia okay I pull three cards. Okay. Wow. Now this is interesting. Oh boy. Again, we got this kind of double two minds I don't know see it's very weird on the one hand we've got this nine of swords here in reverse where there is an acknowledgement from Priscilla that she is the reason why Riley wants to go that primarily she is the reason why Riley wants to get the F on right But there's also, see this bed, it's like a coffin, it's got etchings on it, it's got like, it's like Basset, let me just show you, Basset, like, it's got carvings on it, right, where you can see the hieroglyphics and so on. Well, that refers to the earlier days when Riley and Priscilla had a great relationship, okay, but the thing about it is, there's this competition, you know. And it sounds weird. It sounds as it's, it's like there's a competition. When when Riley, this is the energy that's coming up on all of these cards because we've got the Ace of Pentacles here as well. This Priscilla, you know, this is how Priscilla shows up in the readings from the beginning, and the Five of Pentacles in reverse, that pity party card type of thing. Her and Navarone in the card, 
the five of pentacles that showed up in the reverse and it's come up in several readings well traditionally in earlier readings this is how priscilla turns up the very first reading i did when priscilla started this lawsuit and i said how does priscilla feel about riley this is the card that came up the first card the first card that came up ace of pentacles she wants money from riley she wants riley's money she wants to be in charge of elvis's money She insisted in interviews, oh, Graceland is Lisa Marie's, but she wants the money. Anyhow, the death card has come up as well. So, and there's competition on here. It's just strange because the death card refers to a sudden dramatic change. Okay? Transformation, just the death of something. And then, because we can see the, re the on the white horse here, the Grim Reaper. Okay, you see the priests there praying. Sudden change. But the psychic energy that came up behind on the back of this card, if this card was coated in something, it's coated in competition. So to my mind, I was like, huh? Competing with who? Competing with Riley? If Riley goes to Australia, Priscilla will have nobody there available to compete with anymore. Now, see this, the etchings on the bed here, which is now like a coffin. This is the bed that Priscilla made. And she's, like she's tossing and turning in the bed, worried and anxious, but yet all these swords here on the wall, those are all Priscilla's decisions. All the stuff that she did. Now Riley, it looks like, is physically and spiritually about to bow out of the drama. She's, she's going to come off exit stage. And so Priscilla is even more worried about that because she's got nobody to compete with anymore. Now, I just want to, the, the energy that's coming up, right, is that there's always been competition around Riley for some reason. And this gonna sound strange, but what's coming up, family, is how old was, was Lisa when she had Riley? And what is the age difference between Priscilla and Navarone? Because essentially what we have is two mothers with two children growing up together. Don't know if this is gonna make any sense. But when you have friends, right? and you have children of the same age and you take them out for pizza together and they're the same age and they play together and they could probably wear each other's, you know. I know one Navarone's a boy and Riley was a girl, but there's only a few years difference between the two of them, you know. That means Priscilla and Lisa both had babies, young babies, young children around the same time. Let's call it under, under five-year-olds at the same time. Are you understanding? And the difference with the age difference between Lisa and Navarone. And you really think about it? Lisa was practically grown by the time Navarone was born. And then a few years later, what was it, three or four years later, she had Riley. So the two of them, Priscilla and uh, Lisa, were both Priscilla learning to be a parent again. Because when you have children with a big age gap, So here we have the two friends, but they're not friends, they're mother and daughter with their two little children. And you know Priscilla adores Navarone in a way that she never adored Lisa Marie because her relationship with Lisa Marie was based upon her ex-husband. And Lisa getting older and wiser every day and reminding her mom that none of this shit belongs to you, it's mine. So the resentment that Priscilla had towards Lisa, 
she never had that resentment towards Navarone and therefore lavished the boy with love. So Riley now, coming like my friend's child. You're cute and everything, but I don't love you like how I love my child. Even though Riley is her granddaughter. So now Riley, who's been there all these years, been there for her whole life, now Riley is exiting stage left with her own little pretty nice family and her good husband and a good baby. And they're going not to flip in Mexico, but they're going one whole day and a half away over there, down under to Australia. It's a whole new world. It's like moving to a different planet. <laughs> Big up Australia. They're cousins with the UK. Y'all know that, right? Uh, fun fact, they used to think I was Australian when I first got in there because I was a Cockney Sparrow. I was talking like that. All right, mate. All right, mate. <laughs> How you doing? Apples and pears. How's your father? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Cockney Sparrow. <laughs> I think I still remember Cockney See? I think. I think. It's not I think. It's I think. It's RP English. Royal Pronunciation English. <laughs> My ancestors would be very unhappy about it because of course they're children of colonies but that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other conversation. Priscilla will have nobody to fight with once Riley dips. And that is the point. Competition over. Who is she going to fight with? Navarone says that he's going to take his money and checks and his money. What money, you may ask. The, the, the Graceland money. He's going to take that and go to Brazil where his father really people where his father's people come from right so who is Priscilla going to be left with just Scientology my god huh Just the old lonely widow. Who want to be the old lonely widow? She got one fancy man, but according to my readings, that fancy guy, well, he's not fancy, but you know what I mean, a bit of you know, a, a gentleman friend. Right? He got a young filly, little young, big boobs and all that, in Scientology. He got one already. So when Priscilla is old and, you know, when she really, no, say old and needy, we all old. When she needy, you're going to be looking at her like, and she old compared to who he's got. Some little Scientology secretary disclaimer. So who and what? It looked like Priscilla going to be fighting with the ghost of Elvis. That's what it looked like. Because she, she told Larry King that she thinks about Elvis every day. Why? You divorced him. You're not Elvis you think about every day. You're thinking about the money every day. That's what you're thinking about. That's why you dropped this court case. That's why Riley said as soon as this shit is over, we she out. Her husband don't really, cause he may look, he would do all that immigration stuff for him to get to the United States, USCIS stuff. All of that lengthy and tense and you know they give, give me the green card or not and all the rest of it he's married now but the point of the matter is he did all that only for you to make some drama Priscilla and now Riley don't want to be in this country in the, this country <laughs> she don't want to be in the United States no more <laughs> you can tell where my mind is see my mind is right there in the south in Tennessee my mind is right there. That's why I said this country. Can you see spiritually where I'm at? That's why Uncle Elvis talked to me, you know. Okay, you know that I'm as as <laughs> as kooky and as strange as I am. Man, my my heart and my energy is right there. And God knows, you know how I, I'm desperate to come to Graceland. I'm desperate to come to Tennessee.
inshallah i will make it by the grace of god come on all of the Mary. come on jesus i will make it but this is the whole point the energy is there uncle elvis's energy is there Gladys Vernon them energy is there. Red West energy is there. Everybody's energy is there. Lisa Marie's energy is there. Benjamin is there. <sighs> Let me calm down. www.celestialtarotreadings.com Love you guys and I'll be back tomorrow with at least three readings. Presley readings, Elvis readings, Priscilla, Riley, and Lisa Marie. I want to get back to Lisa Marie and what happened in the Blessed House. I want to get back to Danny, Ke Danny Keo. Now, I was supposed to make a phone call. I'm going to make that tomorrow. Okay? I'll make that tomorrow because um, one of the subbies, beautiful subby, said, Miss Sam, can we get some kind of note or a card or something to Danny Keo, who is Riley's dad and Benjamin's dad, okay? Um, beautiful man. He was at the house, he's the one that found Lisa. She was found by a maid, house staff, but he came back from dropping the girls to school, right? He was the man in the yard, the man in the house, living there with Lisa Marie, and he took the girls to school. Finlay and Harper and come back and the lady was dead on the bar. Well, she wasn't. She had um, I don't even know how to describe it, but they found her on the bathroom floor. She died later on at the hospital. So this is a man who really does need love. He needs everybody's love and good vibes sent to him because we don't know how he is we ain't heard nothing he's been supporting his daughter right it's because really when it come down to it i know riley got her family but that's her dad and he was there from the beginning right and he loved lisa marie so he really is danny has like a, an archive that really, if he was to start talking and stuff like that and giving interviews and so on, we'd really be hearing something. Not totally sure exactly what we'd be hearing, but we'd be hearing a lot. No doubt, extremely, extremely. So, Danny, if you're watching this, I'm gonna try and reach out to you, okay? And it ain't on some Hollywood shit. I don't do Hollywood crap. Okay? I don't. I have Hollywood clients <laughs> and I've had them for years but I don't do the Hollywood thing and that's why people are attracted to me because I ain't highfalutin. I'm not, um, if I was to brag, I could brag but I don't. Okay? So Danny, big ups. Okay? We know you've been through a lot mate. The sub is, everybody on this channel just want you to know that you're loved, that they're thinking of you, and that they're concerned for you as well. And, you know, I don't know what the situation is, Danny, to be honest with you. Everything is relative nowadays. But, man, look, you've given us Riley, and you gave us, you've given us Riley, and you gave us Benjamin. So, we can't throw you out of the picture, even if we wanted to throw you out of the picture. We cannot. You're there. And you are part of this this story. This this basket. You're connected. And so we can't love Riley without loving you. We can't love Elvis without loving Riley and without loving you. And love of course we can't love Lisa Marie without loving you. Okay? all y'all all right so expect a call from me and even if i have to speak if you have a secretary or somebody like that pa family member friend i i will talk to them if i may 
and just say exactly the same things I'm saying to you now, I'll say it to them, okay? Let me stop this recording now, just in case it cut off. <laughs> All right, family, love you guys. www.celestialtarotreadings.com Ashe, chukudalo, inshallah, see you tomorrow. All right? Ashe, bless. I'll come into the comment section and talk with you, as I usually do. All right? All right, bless. Kopunka, as I say here in Thailand. <laughs>